Whether you're setting New Year's resolutions or new intentions, the most important aspect is reprogramming the subconscious mind in order to be successful. My guest, Natalie Ledwell, shares her life journey lessons and how she co-founded Mind Movies during our interview in Encinitas, California. If you're feeling there's something more for you to achieve, acquire, or desire, then this episode is for you. You'll learn how the Mind Movie app can change your trajectory and help you manifest your greatest life. Welcome everyone to the Pollinating the Planet with Love show. I'm your host, Beth Bell, and we're here to talk about those life journey lessons and the pearls of wisdom we learn along the way. Natalie Ledwell is a best-selling author, host of The Inspiration Show, co-host of the cable TV show Wake Up, and founder of Mind Movies, the hugely successful and revolutionary online personal development company that has reached over 5.8 million people worldwide. Mm. (laughs) <laughs> right now, she is working on her brand new, groundbreaking school curriculum entitled Personal Growth Studies, which is designated to teach youth from ages 5 to 18 years foundational life lessons like gratitude, meditation, emotional intelligence, empathy, compassion, self esteem, and setting strong personal standards, just to name a few. Well, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank <It's> you. Exciting. <laughs> wow. It's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> yeah, and so many exciting things going on, and I, I love what you're doing with youth. It just seems like there's such an opportunity there. So before we get into all of that and what you're doing today, I always like to go back in time and say, you know, when you were a little girl, what did you think you were going to be when you grew up? And are you doing that now? Yes. Mm. But it didn't show up the way I thought it was going to. So uh, I grew up in a country town in Australia. That's where the accent's from. And uh, one of eight kids. So I grew up in a really big family. Okay. And so uh, when we finished year 10 in high school, uh, back then you had the option of leaving high school or you could do your higher certificate, which is 11 and 12. Okay. But mum and like none of us did 11 and 12 because mum couldn't afford to keep us at school. So, you know, we, I left school when I was 15. Wow. And um, back then I wanted to be a teacher. Mm. And so I did, and actually wanted to be a PE teacher, like a physical yeah, education teacher. Yeah. So I did the next best thing. I became an aerobics instructor. And uh, <laughs> worked in fitness for 11 years, but um, I was really um, uh, dedicated and ambitious. So I started managing fitness clubs when I was 21 years old. Okay. So I, I started getting into that business world and understanding management yeah. and managing teams. And I would actually speak on stage to club owners from all over Australia on how to systemize their business okay. and how to manage their teams. So I was 24 years old. Right. Yeah, so that's interesting. I wonder how, what inspired you at such a young age to take on such a, a leadership role. You know what? I think I'm one of these born leaders. Mm. Every time I join a group, I seem to accidentally fall into running the group. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, well, and when you say country town, does that mean a small town? Yes. Like of how many people? Uh, about 30,000. So it wasn't okay. wasn't super small, but yeah. 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 Well, I grew up but it was a, country, so. Yes. You know. I grew up in a town of 2,500 people. Oh, so, right. <laughs> so I always just like to gauge, you know. like I think that's an inspirational in some ways because it makes you want to see the see the world or at least it, it did me oh yeah when yeah. I was 18 and old enough which legally in Australia is you you know you're old enough to vote and to do everything and to drink and whatever you want to do I was out of there yeah you know I moved to Sydney which was the biggest city closest to me yeah. um, I didn't know one person okay I didn't know a soul but I'm like I need to get out of here and I just need to go there and I was just knew that that was something that I had to had to do yeah so. and well, now I live in Los Angeles so it's, yeah <laughs> clearly I'm a city girl I don't know how I ended up in the country <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, and I, I want to talk more about that inspired action. I think that, you know, sometimes we take, I think, more easily when we're younger, but as we go through life experiences, sometimes those those jumps, you know, those whatever some people say, crazy, crazy things that we do um, are a little bit more difficult. So yeah. you were doing this inspirational speaking or talking to, you know, owners of, of gyms, and then what did you do from there? What was the next? <laughs> the next well, time? then I met my husband. Okay. And um, God bless him. We were married for 18 years. Uh, we and and we're still really good friends, and we're still business partners. Um, we we separated about five years ago. But I met met Glenn, and then the first business we bought together was a nightclub. Oh, interesting. Yes. So okay. we From had a, a gym to a nightclub. Right. So yeah. and and in the beginning, I kind of struggled with it a little bit because I'm like, oh God, I, you know, I went from this positive, you know, a, a career where I felt mm-hmm. like I was making a difference to creating this environment for people to go out and drink and have an unhealthy lifestyle. Yeah. Like, I don't know whether this is where I'm meant to be. Yeah. Um, but when you look at it, both a service 
industries. Yeah. And you know, once I kind of got my head out of my butt and went, okay, now well, what is it that I love about this? Yeah. Um, and all of the things that I learned on how, how to give consistent service, how to manage your team, how to systemize your business, uh, we applied to the nightclub. Okay. So, uh, and with amazing results, we were the number one club in Sydney for four of the five years that we had it. That's, um, a, tough, that's a tough job to it do. It is tough, yeah. because you know how volatile uh, the nightclub industry yeah. can be. Um, and we had some people that were on our team the entire time. And these were people that were friends of ours. So we knew how to communicate clearly what it is that we wanted from them, what, they, yeah. what our expectations of them, what they were, what their expectations of us should be. Right. Um, and so we had this you know, mutually respectful um, relationship with all of our team. Right. And my main thing was like, I don't care if you're the DJ or the doorman or yeah. the person behind the bar, we all play an equal role in making sure that the experience that people have when they come here is something they'll remember for their lifetime. Right. You know, like I so remember. Were, yeah, very experiential. Even, yeah. Even then in your life. Okay. Yeah. So after the nightclub, then. So then we went through what I call my beige years. Beige years. Ooh, I <laughs> well, like beige that. Okay. is like just a nothing color. Yeah, so it's I like, know. yeah, you know, we were just sort of floating along. But, for, and this is now I'm in my 30s. So we, we bought the club when I was 28. Uh, so I'm like 33 when I get when we sell it. And uh, we had a whole string of different businesses. And, uh, you know, we had coffee franchises. We are doing property development. Mm -hmm. We had the first bathroom advertising company in Australia. Yeah. Um, we would like everything. We were just, you know, and, and everything, every time we look at a business, it's like, well, what's our return on our investment? Right. Can we do this? What's our right. exit strategy? So it was all yeah. just transactional. Yeah. There was nothing spiritual or fulfilling about any of it. Okay. You know, and I kind of feel like well, in my 30s, I felt a little lost, yeah. you know, and um, and I really got had adopted some pretty unhealthy lifestyle things from the whole nightclub years. So it was like I, that was a real struggle time for me. Yeah. And then uh, we we got to a point where I was just like we would had four businesses at the same time. We're still struggling financially. And I'm like, I don't get it. So I'm like, I've been a, 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 a student of personal development from the age of 21. So how are we still struggling? Like I know what we're supposed to be doing and we're doing it. Yeah. And then we saw the secret. Okay. And yeah. um, a friend of mine told me to, to buy, we had to purchase it online. It was the original version with Esther Hicks in it. And we sat down on a Saturday afternoon in our living room and watched this movie and both of us looking at each other going like, oh my God, yeah. this is the missing piece. Yeah. You know, um, before that, we didn't realize the importance of visualizing or visualizing and feeling the emotions of already being there. Yes. I, I never set myself outrageous goals because I needed to know the plan. Right. Like if I couldn't see exactly every step on how to create it, then I would never set that goal. Mm -hmm. And after watching that movie, I'm like, oh my goodness, I don't need to know everything. I just need to know where I'm heading, like believe with everything, what it feels see like it, what it's there. like to be there, yeah. and then just start action in that direction and then things will start to fall yeah. into place. Well, one of the things that I feel a lot of people struggle with is, and m myself included at times, is if you haven't actually experienced a certain feeling, how do you bring that feeling in when you haven't really felt it? You know, before I made money, I didn't really know what it felt like to have money. You know, yeah. so people say, oh, feel like you have lots of money. So sometimes there's a, I think, a, a catch for people that they don't know how to get well, the feeling inside. The trick around that is that how I used to feel, because people think that you have to feel some kind of joy or happiness. Yeah. No, not necessarily. Like I, when I was in those visualizations and what I would do is I'd put this big red marker through our credit card bills, paid on it, and I would sit there and I knew that once that was done, that I'm not feeling joy, I'm feeling relief. Right. I'm like, oh, okay. I'm Good. feeling like, I a, like that. Great right? point. Yes. that yeah. a weight has been lifted off my shoulders, yeah. that I don't, I don't have this sick pit in my stomach anymore. Yeah. I'm actually feeling like I've got, you know, that I'm feeling good in my body. Like it doesn't have to necessarily be, a, you know, a super high level, you know, emotion. It's yeah. just like, okay, when you get to this point in this moment, yeah, you know, and when we're visualizing rather than going, well, okay, I'm earning $10,000 a month and then trying to go through all these different pictures, you just press, pick one scene, one scene and you drill deep, yeah. you know, like I would see myself you know, sitting in my in my office and see all the nil balances on the computer on my yeah. com on, on my credit card statements, and know what that feeling relief was going to be, yeah. and I would marinate in that. Yeah. You know, and s stay in that for as long as possible. You know, then I'm like, okay, well, now that I'm relieved that it's done, so well, now what's the next step? 
oh, okay, we'll probably go traveling. So where are we going to go? So I'd see us on a beach or I'd see yeah. us in Portugal or I'd see right. us, you know, and just in that one scene and try and bring all of my yeah. senses into that visualization. Yeah. And then do you have a tip or a tool that to quiet the mind because, you know, the mind just keeps coming back in and wanting to show you something else and show you your fear and tell you, you know, that the bill's not paid or, you know, whatever the little trick is. So yeah. do you have a tip or a tool that you use? Well, to just of course, mind the, movies. So... <laughs> <laughs> little plug there. Yeah, um, yeah so that's, this is why my movies were created in the first yeah. place. Because uh, even looking at a static vision board of pictures, yeah, you can go there in your mm -hmm. mind, but it kind of was hard to stay there. Yeah. But when you had this little movie that you can download to your phone or any device, that's the affirmation. So first of all, we're using the right words, like the proper words. Yeah. We're not going, I'm debt free, because the word debt conjures up a certain picture in our yes. mind. It's like, yes. you know, but so you're using the right language with images or photos that really enhance that. But the secret source is the music. Okay. Because the music is what helps us to emotionally get to where we need to be, yes. because it raises, you know, elevates yes. our emotion. Um, so it's kind of like it's it, it's like you watch this movie, and I've I've, I've worked with thousands of people one on one helping them make their own private my movie, yeah. and the tears that you see, you know, where I work a lot with Dr. Joe Dispenza, so he'll have thousands of people in yeah. a room watching their my movie at the same time, and you can hear people crying, yeah, because they're like, this is my future, like I know this yeah. is this is it, because number one they've got clear about what it is that they want, yes. They've been able to articulate it into this medium, and now when they watch it, they they just feel and understand and believe that they will actually be able to create this in their future. Yeah. Okay. Well, I want to talk more about this, but I know because I've watched a few videos of you that you had some really interesting journeys coming to the United States and how you really got this off the ground. So yes. when we come back from a break, <laughs> we'll talk all about that. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> Blossom Bliss products are designed to help empower pure love and purpose in your life. It's through the power of words, flowers, and symbols that our products assist you in creating a blissful life. The power of words in our mini mantra word bar necklaces assist you in setting and blossoming your personal intentions. The affirmation cards leverage the power of flowers by providing daily inspiration. And the power of symbols in our life journey bracelets are great reminders of the things that bring us peace, joy, and love. Products are made and blessed in Bali with love by Balinese artisans who work with empowered hearts. When you purchase jewelry with a bee charm, we donate to save the bees. Join us in pollinating the planet with love. Go to our website, BlossomBlissBally.com. Again, that's BlossomBlissBally.com. Okay, we're back with Natalie Ledwell, and we were just talking about my movies because I was asking about a tip or a tool, mm -hmm. and I love that you have these three things to, you know, really the, you said secret sauce being the music, but it's also the visuals and the words that are very specific. Right. So um, you've got this big idea. You know you're going to create this company, but you're still in Australia at the time. Right? Yes. So um, one of the businesses that we were in was a network marketing business. Okay. And I remember at the time, I was like, I was convinced. It's the first time I'd seen this business model. I'm like, oh, because every other business we had was brick and mortar. Like, if we didn't show up and do the hours, we were not earning any money. Right. But I could see the leverage in this, this business model. I'm like, oh, this is it, right? And I'd written out all my affirmations about how I was traveling the world and speaking on stage and helping people create income and, like, all these things. Yeah. And then um, through that business, we met our friend Ryan. And Ryan came to us with the idea of Mind Movies. And he's like, you know, look, I've got this great idea. We put the instructions up. And Glenn and I, four businesses. Uh, and I'm like, dude, I, great idea. But we know nothing about the internet. Yeah. And Glenn could hardly turn on a computer. Oh, wow. And I hadn't even heard of YouTube or, or Facebook. I didn't know what a social network was. We knew nothing. Like, I used the computer for bookkeeping. And, and invoices, like I knew how to use Word, right. <laughs> that was it. Wow. No time on the internet. Yeah. And we're 40 at this stage. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. so I'm like, and I, like, it's a great idea, and he's like, it's all right, I'll teach you. We're like, all right, and you know, the, the secret had just been on Oprah, so we're like, and, and we actually had the thought at the time, well, wonder if we could leverage this whole thing yeah. with, with Oprah and the secret. So we're like, okay, this is it. So we, you know, we created this little video ghetto video in our living room in Sydney 
Um, and, you know, we put this video up on YouTube, which were, at the time was highly illegal, but we didn't know what we were doing. You know, we had commercial music. We had oh. the beginning of I Dream of Jeannie, you know, when she's coming out of the bottle. Like, it was yeah. just... Anyway, when, when, once we got a clue, we had to take it down. But right. um, but that was our source of traffic. Yeah. So we're getting all these people sending us emails going, oh, my God, this is changing my life. Yeah. And the, what I felt when I worked in the fitness industry started to get spark up again. I'm like, right. okay, guys, we need to pay attention to this. We need That's to figure out this here, internet yeah. thing. Like, how do you, like, we couldn't, like, we knew marketing, we knew business, but it's like, how do we do this internet thing? And it was interesting how once we got into it and we realized you could buy programs that would teach you how mm. to do this, yeah. we realized principles are the same. It was just a yeah. different medium, yeah. you know, but we had in our mind this belief yeah. that you know the internet is something strange and different and, yeah. and something that we don't know about and it didn't take us long to learn yeah so um, but well it, I love that I think that's a great inspiration because a lot of people are saying they're going well I don't have the skill set or I don't have right and when you put the intention into it the people come it sounds like Ryan was a great a great person to help you to inspire you to really learn some of these tools and look yeah. where you are now I mean it's like you're like the savviest internet person out there <laughs> <laughs> well I had people I have yeah. a team. <laughs> So I don't know if I go that far, but what I would say is that we were very intentional about when we mm. started. Like, w yeah. yes, we figured out you could buy a programs online. Yeah. So we two thousand dollars we invested in the first program, which was a big deal for us. Yeah. We're like, what if this is a scam? Like, we'd never spent that amount of money online, even yeah. though we're charging twenty dollars for what we consider is air, which was our product at the time. Yeah. And uh, so we we invested the two thousand dollars. We incorporated one idea from that first. And, of course, okay. you know, as soon as we got it, we're implementing straight away, yeah. which has always been our MO, like get it, action straight away. Um, and we were selling our $20 product at 50% off through four emails, and we, we made more than $2,000. We were like, okay, this is crazy. Right. And then Frank Kern, who was the guy who was doing the program, he's announced he's doing a live event in April 2008. And Glenn, in his original Mind movie, one of his affirmations was that we live in an endless summer. So An endless, endless summer. Summer. Yeah. Okay. So he's like, well, let's do six months in California, six months in Sydney. And I'm like, hey, this is 18 months after he made that my movie. I'm like, okay, let's do it. So, yeah. but when we came, even on the plane on the way over, I said to Glenn, okay, first of all, we need to meet this Frank guy. We need to somehow encourage him to yeah. mentor us because yeah. he's, the, he's the man. I go, and we need to meet other marketers. Right. We, did, we just need to be sponges in this world. And so at that event, uh, we were accepted into his mastermind group, uh, $2,700 a month. We couldn't afford, but we, it was like that was the reason that we were there. And then all the friends that we met and all the people that we met on that weekend who are still our friends today are some of the best internet marketers in, wow. the, in, the, you know, in the world. So we, we actually got to be in the right. It, it, even in social situations, we were learning. We were sponges. Yeah. We were just immersing ourselves in this world yeah. because... We risked everything. Like when we came over here, we had no money. Yeah. We were existing on credit cards. I know. That's what I heard in your video. Yeah. And, and, and then really to, to build what you've built now. So you ended up spending the money on this mastermind. What was, what was the inspiration to have you do that, knowing that you were kind of balancing you know, a very low balance. <laughs> well, that's in your a great account. story, which I love to tell because because there's, so there's Ryan, Glenn, and myself, and we're sitting there. And when he announces that you know you have to apply, I'm just like, oh, yeah, I manifested you, this so quickly. So yeah, I'm like it. running this compelling yeah. reason. And meanwhile, Glenn and Ryan are sitting next to me, and they're having this conversation: Should we right. do it? Should yeah. we not? We can't really afford it, but will it be worth it? And should we stretch ourselves? I'm not even in that conversation. I'm just you know I'm. This is, I'm like, this is why we're here. So I get up, they go, where are you going? I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm yeah. like, this is why we're here. Yeah, So I just, it was kind of a magical alignment for you to be at that at that talk, like to be in the presence of this individual, yes. right? I mean, that was yeah. so, so you saw it and you're like, well, we're oh, here. Oh yeah, and, and my, just... my whole thing is like, well, he needs to see us. Like the, if you see the video of that event, you actually see me on video because I'm putting my hand up to answer all the questions. I don't have the answer. I just need him to notice us. You know, because I'm like, I need to be in your sphere kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so that was hilarious. And there was a couple of other stories about that. But, but you know, so as I'm walking off, Ryan's looking at Glenn going, What is she doing? Dude, you know, she's your wife. And Glenn's like, <laughs> what, you think I can stop that? You know, yeah. so. Yeah. But, wow. it, but they both agree it was one of the smartest decisions we made. Because when we got to the launch yeah. and everything started going wrong, Frank was a, a massive support for us. 
and really helped us when you know our email delivery system shut down our account because they thought we were doing something illegal because our list grew from like 8,000 to 80,000 in a week. 8,000 to 80,000 80, yeah. in a week. It was insane. Well, I've, we'd never seen anything like it. Wow. Yeah. And do you, do you teach people <laughs> this part too? I mean, like what the magic mix is on the marketing end of, of things? Um, Glenn does. Glenn does. Yeah, okay. this is his, that's his wheelhouse. You know, and the fact that we are not married anymore and uh, we still have this friendship and we yeah. still have this business relationship is because, you know, we learned very early on from all the other businesses that we have mm -hmm. is that we have to have our own departments. We have yeah. our own responsibilities. Yeah. And it's like marketing is your thing. You're the CEO. I'm not going to even poke my nose in there because I know yeah. that you've got it and I trust yeah. you with it. Yeah. Um, and it's the same. I'm, I'm the kind of more the face and, you know, the creative and creating the programs yeah. and, and, you know, being out there and yeah. being an advocate for my movies. So he knows that I do a great job, yeah. job at that. So. Yeah. Well, I, I also do, if you're willing, would like to touch on the, the relationship aspect of this. But mm. before we do, we're going to go to a quick break. And when we come back, I'd like to hear how you've been able to maintain that because I think that's really admirable. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay, great. Blossom Bliss products are designed to help empower pure love and purpose in your life. It's through the power of words, flowers, and symbols that our products assist you in creating a blissful life. The power of words in our mini mantra word bar necklaces assist you in setting and blossoming your personal intentions. The affirmation cards leverage the power of flowers by providing daily inspiration. And the power of symbols in our life journey bracelets are great reminders of the things that bring us peace, joy, and love. Products are made and blessed in Bali with love by Balinese artisans who work with empowered hearts. When you purchase jewelry with a bee charm, we donate to save the bees. Join us in pollinating the planet with love. Go to our website, BlossomBlissBally.com. Again, that's BlossomBlissBally.com. Okay, we're back with Natalie Ledwell, and we were just about to get into a little bit more of the personal side of things. So mm -hmm. you've done all these businesses with your husband. Now you've chosen to split, so you're not romantically involved, but you've remained best of friends, and you're still doing business together. I think that's potentially a rare find these days. So what's the secret to that? What's the secret to working together yeah. in so many businesses first, and then what's the secret to staying friends afterwards? So what we found is that every time we would go into a new business together, we'd always have this like teething problem si yeah. situation. I was actually saying to someone the other day, because I watched the Studio 54 um, documentary on, on Netflix, okay. and it brought back so many, there are so many similarities between what we were doing and building yeah. the club from scratch and doing all the renovations and then the opening night and yeah. people out on the street and just, and then how it all just kind of went pear-shaped. So there was a lot of similarities, it brought back a lot of memories. Yeah. Um, but I was saying how the because we bought the nightclub and then two weeks later we got married, we had our wedding. Oh my goodness, <laughs> so, that's a lot. Which kind of sums up our life really. But um, but then I realised that you know that first six months it was so stressful individually and as a couple. And you know we got to this point within a few months where we could hardly have a civil word to each yeah. other. I'm like, oh my god, have I made a mistake? But I'm like, okay, let's sit down and talk about this. Yeah. Like, what's going on? Um, and at least we were able to emotionally detach ourselves enough to go, well, when you say this, it makes me feel like this. You're like, oh, well, that's mm. not what I mean. But yeah. when you say that, you make me feel like this. He's like, yeah. well, that's not what I mean. So we were yeah. able to talk it out. Yeah. Um, but there's always the finding, you know, because we know we, ha we can't work together together because we're both very strong uh, personalities that can't be told what to do. Yeah. <laughs> Especially by each other. Okay. So, um, so we figured out, you know, what our skill sets are, yeah. how we complement each other, and how we would find what our roles would be in those different businesses then yeah. move forward. Okay. So when so get clear on roles. Yes, get yeah. really clear on and the honor roles. Honor each other for your strengths. Absolutely. Yes. But trust and respect that that person will be able to do that, rather than having to go in and give them suggestions right. and things like that all the time. I don't do that. Right. Because I know he's got it. He knows I've got it. Right. You know. So, uh, so when we split. Um, you know, honestly, it was it was two years in the making, you know, and we'd really just grown apart and yeah. we still love each other and even then loved each other, just wasn't yeah. in love and hadn't been for some yeah. time because uh, we just thought we were better than everybody else. We didn't have to work on our marriage. Uh, what a load of crap. Yeah. <laughs> and it's something that we should have done. Yeah. Um, and as soon as it, it kind of went down, you know, and, and how, you know, Glenn had met somebody else. And honestly, I was relieved because mm. I'm like, I just, I'm, I wanted out because I was just not happy. Yeah. Um, but the first thing I did is ask the question is, well, what was my role? How did I show yeah. up in this? Yeah. 
and it was I, I started taking responsibility yeah because and up until that point I was blaming him for everything yeah. And as soon as you blame someone or something or a situation outside of yourself, you lose all control to be yeah. able to do anything about it. Yeah. So while I'm sitting in that little victim-y, yeah. you know, poor me, he's, you know, it's, this is all his fault, I can't shine because I can't outshine him and all the lame excuses mm -hmm. that I was using as a yeah. crutch to not shine myself because they weren't true. They were beliefs and programs I had in my mind that, I was, that, that was keeping me small. It was nothing to do with him. It was right. all to do with me. Yeah. And so when I really kind of started taking responsibility for my own um, responses, my own reactions, you know, the way that I was thinking and the way that I was treating him and myself, yeah. that's when things started to shift. Yeah. And that's how we could remain friends because there was no pointing fingers, there was no blaming. Yeah. It was like, well, well how, did I, how did I show up in this? And, and I was willing to fess up to, yeah. you know, this, was, this yeah. is how I contributed yeah. to it. That's really amazing. It's great. Yeah. I mean, it, I think that's what relationships are for, right? To help help reflect to us what is it that I'm working on inside. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's go back to the mind movies because it's such a powerful tool. Yes. Right? So if someone wants to get the mind movies, it sounds like they can make them. I've been on the app, but I haven't actually explored enough to see. You can make your own. Or yes. Because you also have a whole library of them that are available, right? Based yeah. on whether it's money or maybe a life partner, or right? Yeah. So tell us a little bit more about the Mind Movie. So um, your Mind Movie, in essence, is just a visualization tool. Mm -hmm. So it helps you to go there in your mind. It helps you mm -hmm. to create what your version of that is. Yeah. So you know, if you go to the Mind Movies website, mindmovies.com website, okay. there are you can download six pre-made Mind Movies. Okay. Now these are amazing because they help you to number one figure out what it is that you want. Yeah. It's one of the most powerful parts of the process. You know, when you figure out, because people go, well, I want to be successful. I'm like, great. Mm -hmm. But what does that look like? What does yeah. that mean to you? Because yeah. we all have a different definition of what that is. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, when you go through, so you can either watch these to give you some ideas. Um, we actually created software. Okay. So it makes it really easy for people to create their own movies. And when yeah. you go inside, there's a whole library of affirmations, whole library of photos, mm -hmm. whole library of music that you just drag and drop. Mm. You know, so mm. you can either get inspired by what we have in there, or you can write your own affirmations, import yeah. your own music, import your own photos, yeah. and create. But I like that there. because I think there is a real—I don't want to say trick, but importance to the actual words that are being used. And since you guys are real masters at this, it sounds like it makes a lot of sense to go to the Mind Movies and create through your platform as opposed to try to create something on your own. Oh well, you can. Yeah. I mean, you can create like in essence, it's a video creation software. Yeah. But all of the, um, like I said, the instructional videos, yeah. all of the, you know, the affirmations, all of the th that it is in there, so you can drag and drop really quickly rather yeah. than having to go and search the internet or okay. other yeah. places to get, you know, those yeah. kind of photos. Yeah. So. Now you also mentioned that you work closely with Joe Dispenza, and I love his work. Yes. It's just amazing. <laughs> so how do you fit that in, and what does that look like when you bring in the Mind Movies to this? process so um, I was introduced to dr. Joe uh, six years ago maybe mm. and we've been working together pretty much ever since okay so I've been going to his uh, advanced workshops or his week-long workshops yeah. uh, for, for that length of time but how he uses mind movies is that um, and from the very beginning he saw the the potential in this and if you read his latest book becoming supernatural mm -hmm. there's a whole chapter about mind movies in there and scientifically why mm -hmm. they're so mm -hmm. effective mm -hmm. Um, so he, what yeah, he, I'm, I'm thinking he's done brain scans and been observing the brain during the mind movies as well. Which, oh yeah, <laughs> is that in the book as well? Yes, okay, it is. About what happens? Okay. Yeah. So what happens in our in our yeah. brain? So, um, and how he uses it is he'll he'll play this kaleidoscope um, movie up on the screen, yeah. and the kaleidoscope uh, with this beautiful ethereal music is designed to get you into trance. Yeah. So when you go into trance, what's happening is that that analytical part of your mind is starting to shut down. Just distract it a little bit. Yeah. So so, not, and yeah. then what you what happens now is that you're in suggestible mind. Mm. So whatever visual you have in front of you, whatever you know stimulus you have in front of you, is now going straight into the subconscious. Yeah. Okay. So um, so we watch the kaleidoscope, then we all open up our devices and start watching our mind movie, okay. repetitively. So can we get the kaleidoscope? on the Mind Movies website as well? You can't, but okay. you can go to from the Dr. Joe website. Okay. He has that. Okay. He has that okay. there. So then you can go back to, um, you know, you go back to the kaleidoscope, back to your Mind Movie. Then you go back to the kaleidoscope playing the song of your Mind Movie. See, the song has now become an anchor. Mm -hmm. You know, so you're, you're watching the kaleidoscope, but your brain is already filling in 
you know, your it's mind moving in your yeah, that's yeah. right, because it's already and then we go into a meditation and we choose one scene and we just go deep yeah. into that and use all of our senses, yeah. which is yeah. an amazing thing. But we also have a, a program called My Movies Matrix, which does something very similar. Mm. So it's uh, we we have my movies are already made uh, on different life areas, yeah. but we have brainwave entrainment audio connected to the ones that you watch in the morning. So okay. it sounds like a, a buffeting sound, but it's at a frequency where it does the same thing. It shuts down your analytical mind, yeah. puts you into suggestible mind. Yeah. So if you watch that two or three times and then watch um, your personal mind movie, it's just getting programmed straight in. Yeah. You know, so it takes a lot of the hev heavy lifting out. So whenever we step outside of ourselves mm. or push ourselves to you know, earn more money or find that loving relationship or you know, e expand on our health, yeah. often we'll have certain thoughts uh, that uh, are sabotaging us from being able to create those uh, results yeah. in our life yeah. because they're connected to beliefs and programs yeah. that we picked up when we were younger. Mind, yes. But when you're able to put uh, program all this into into your subconscious mind, what happens is that your subconscious mind starts to believe that this is your reality, right. and so we, it starts to create new neural pathways that have thoughts that travel from the subconscious to the conscious yeah. mind that replace those negative thoughts mm -hmm. uh, which are more in alignment with what it is that you want to create yeah so once you create these new neural pathways you've got these positive thoughts coming forward they in turn naturally start to change your actions yeah. so when your thought actions and emotions are all in alignment with this future you want to create that's what we call the trifecta yeah um, you are now vibrating at a frequency that is a match to those results yes so through the law of attraction, whatever is a match to that frequency yes. that we're sending out, then gets attracted back to us to help it yeah. make our reality. Yeah. Well, and he always says, what fires together, wires together, right? right? So you're trying to rewire to bring in what you really want, not what your subconscious mind is, is continuing to bring back. Now, Abraham Hicks says 17 seconds. 17 think, seconds, yeah, right? exactly. Is that what you also would say? I mean, how, how long do we need to expose ourselves to that mind movie and how frequently do we do it? Well, I think, especially in the beginning, you want to do it at least a couple of times a day. Okay. Um, but remember, when you're visualizing, you don't have to be sitting with your eyes closed right. in like a meditation. Yeah. You could be driving the car, you could be standing in a queue, and you probably could just go there better. in your mind. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Probably, yeah, because yeah. then you've really got the wiring happening, and, and yeah, interesting. Okay. Yeah, you could be walking in nature. You could, it, it, it could be a daydream. Where you're, right. where you're thinking about, oh, I know, right. I know when um, when we were doing this launch of My Movies in 2008 and we were just so stressed and having to learn all these yeah. new skills at 40. Um, and uh, we, when we were super stressed, we'd leave the apartment. We were in uh, Ocean Beach here in San Diego. Okay. And uh, we'd go and get a coffee and then we'd drive down to the dog beach because we'd left a couple of dogs in Australia and watching oh. dogs with big smiles frolicking yeah. on the beach would help us to get us into a higher vibration, like a higher frequency. Okay. We knew that we needed to get out of the stress yeah. and get into something that's going to make us feel better. Yeah. And then from that place, we used to have these conversations in present tense, as if it was already happening, yes. that the launch was done. Yeah. Lunch was over and it was such a massive success and you know, we were taking our families on holidays and we're eating out at Fancy Pants restaurants and it yeah. was just it was like, yeah. and we would talk about how amazing and just really feel what it was like to already yeah. be there. Yeah. That was one of the things that we would do. And then we had obviously had a mind movie about that, which we watched a lot. <laughs> yeah, I bet. <laughs> to get us into that frequency. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I like that. Well, I use the flowers in that way because the flowers mm. are sort of my divine portal to raise my vibration. And, and I get a lot of downloads during that time that I think, you know, are coming from a much higher source and not, not my own little subconscious mind. Well, anything that you, any kind of mindful ritual that mm -hmm. you can do, like we were just talking about my girlfriend, Zina Musica. Yeah who's starting her new tea company, which is called uh, Magic Hour. Yeah. And uh, and uh, the same thing, like when I'm doing t yeah. the tea, um, like I said, almond matcha is my flavor, but she's got like, you know, raspberry oil and, yeah. you know, coconut chai and all these amazing yeah. things that when I'm seeing myself in this future and I'm sitting down and being mindful and having my cup of tea, like I'm putting the tea in and the water and, and yeah. really the, the taste and the, the aroma yeah. is another anchor. Yeah. It's like the music. Yes. Or it's like the visual of the mind movie. When you're bringing these other senses in that you are now connecting with this future, every time I smell that aroma, it's like, oh, like the original yeah. song um, to my first mind movie is called Clocks by Coldplay. Oh, okay. And so every time I hear that song, I'm crying. Because that movie was the beginning of a life that I would have created that 
far exceeded anything I could possibly dream up for myself. Yeah. yeah. Like to think that I'm living this life right now is just, I still drop into immense gratitude for it. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Now mm. you have an app, right? And on this app, I've kind of looked around on it a little bit, but it, it yeah. looks like it's um, a community of people. Absolutely. So how can people go in there and feel supported? Because, you know, you had the benefit of having a partner that you could sit on the beach with and, you know, and have these future conversations in the present tense mm -hmm. or in the present time. Um, but for people who feel like, well, I don't have a partner or I don't have someone that's in the same space, um, is that a place that they can really find people to Absolutely. have a community with? And even with some of the programs that we have, we found mm -hmm. that there's a lot of people who uh, are maybe in marriages or relationships mm -hmm. or in families where they something sparked for them. Okay. And so they're, they're seeking and looking for ways that they can yeah. improve the way they think and the yeah. way that they have their life. Um, but there's no one else around them in their immediate environment yeah. that is also in the same same thing. So, you know, with the My Movies app, what we're doing is trying to create a community of positivity. So it's like it's like sure. a social network, but it's but it's only for positivity. Yeah. And so, um, you know, we our community are getting rewarded for you know doing their random acts of kindness and their gratitudes and things like yeah. that. Um, we're giving them a lot of information where they can. Um, you know, really expand their knowledge on how it is that then how they operate and how their brains work and, and why certain things yeah. work. Um, and then also being able to have the ability to encourage other people yes. and support other people within yeah. the community. Um, so it's it's like this big ball of loving awesome yeah. in there. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> Which I love. <laughs> now, it's coming to me, I, I want to get into the, the educational aspect. I just love that you're looking to help children because why not start early, right? right. So what, what is that program all about? What does it look like? Yeah, so at the moment, it's a curriculum for schools. Okay. Okay, so Personal Growth Studies is the, is the name of the program. And uh, this is one of these uh, prime examples of how, you know, when you're faced with, I don't think I'm worthy, I don't think I'm smart enough to do this, like I, all of these doubts and all mm. of these, these things came up for me when this first was presented to me as an opportunity. Mm. And I'm like, I don't think I can do this. And I, I honestly, I've tried to walk away a few times from Interesting, this. Interesting, yeah. yeah. So, um, so and uh, and and so you know, I left school when I was 15, and I don't have children. So I'm like, who do I think I am doing a children's program? Like this is crazy. Um, but what happened is that uh, we uh, was um, I created the children's version of my movies, and then I didn't know what to do with it. So I'm like, well, give me a sign. Yeah. <laughs> Show me what's yeah. going to happen. Um, and then, uh, kind of really long story short, um, I, next thing you know, I'm on the phone with a with the dean of a university in, in Medellin, in Colombia, and we're talking about you know donating my movies for the kids there, and and he said, could you create a curriculum as well? Yeah. And I'm like, sure. What do you need? And and you know, he's like, I need twelve lessons, blah blah blah. And I get off the phone, and I am freaking out. I'm yeah. like, why did I say yes to that? I knew I couldn't say no, but I'm like, I, and I just went into my whole story. I'm not good enough, or, or I don't deserve it, I'm not smart, like I'm not qualified. Mm. And then I kind of sat down and do what I do and just sat in my meditation and went, into, and went to that place where I was in the classroom in, in, yeah. in um, Columbia. And I was talking to the teachers and I could see the results it was having. Yeah. And then I come out of it and I go, well, I just have to figure this out. So, I mean, of course I didn't do it on my own. Yeah. You know, I managed to team up with a woman who um, specializes in early age curriculum. And so we got the first 12 lessons done. And then again, I'm sort of stuck at this, well, I don't know what to do with it next. Yeah. You know, and I had to choose, I was, I had spread myself too thin and I was looking at a book and a TV show mm. and the kids program. And I'm like, I need to choose one and just get mm. serious about it. Yeah. Like, well, it's not going to be kids because, you know, I'm not worthy. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, these two are sexier anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and then my girlfriend in Australia, who's who's just this incredible soul, um, who's got a couple of master's degrees in, yeah. in children's therapy, said, look, I want to help you do this curriculum. I'm like, oh, <laughs> kids <program." laughs> But it's every yeah. time I'm working on this, yeah. with every cell of my being, I know this is my legacy. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. Wow. Yeah, I'm so glad you're doing it because that is the time to really start shifting and changing thought processes, right? And, and reprogram the sub subconscious mind. It'll be interesting to see the acceptance of some of the parents who may not understand what it is that you're doing and think that you're trying to reprogram, you know, in some... Well, it's not like that at all. Okay. You know, it's not like anything that I teach adults. This is specifically for children. Yeah. So there are a lot of social and emotional learning programs yeah. out there. Uh, there are suicide prevention. There's anti-bullying. There's, um, you know, meditation. There's mindfulness. Okay. But this, yeah. what we've created, is all of that. Okay. 
all of it okay. in one in one yeah. curriculum. So. And is that available? So if someone wants to get that today, absolutely. That, okay. Yes. The children can still access the mind movies specific to them. Yes, absolutely. Okay. okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Ah, yeah. I've got three <laughs> nephews, so I'll have to. Oh, I'll have great. To get them watching mind <laughs> movies. Um, how do you see what you're doing? assist in pollinating the planet with love? Well, one of the things that really spurned me to make sure that I got this thing done is um, I read a news story about probably about a year and a half ago now okay. of a 10 year old girl that had committed suicide mm. because she was being bullied. And I don't normally watch the news or read the news, but this had come through on my Facebook feed and it broke my heart and it, it really, it snapped something inside of yeah. me. Uh, so, suicide is the second leading cause of death for kids between yeah. the age of 10 and 24 in the US. And those, those numbers are pretty similar in a lot of other places okay. around the world. And I know that I can make a difference. Like I know that through teaching kids how to set their personal standards and, and what emotional intelligence is, how to, to regulate their own emotions, um, you know, how to see themselves as this beautiful individual yeah. and, and redefine what the, what the definition of beauty is. There are so many things that we include in yeah. this curriculum that I know is going to give children the skills and the tools and the habits that's yeah. going to set them up for life. Yeah. You know, there, yeah. there seems to be a, between the, you know, the social media and the online thing and, you know, and the uh, video games and, and, and like there seems to be a gap in morality at the moment. Yeah. Um, and we want to step in and, and really help kids be empowered yeah. for themselves and for the for their friends as well. Yeah, so. what great work. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay, well, are there any final pearls of wisdom that we maybe haven't touched on or that you'd like to share? Um, you know, I'm actually working on a, uh, like a limiting belief program at the moment, and okay. we were talking about how, you know, uh, the, the main ones that come up is like, I'm not worthy or I don't deserve or I'm afraid I'll fail or I'm yeah. concerned about people judging me yeah. or the other one, it's too late for me. So, you know, I was talking about how we learned all these new skills at 40 um, and now I'm 50 and now I'm, I'm again, stepping out and, and taking on education. Like, yeah. what am I thinking? Yeah. <laughs> but what, I, what I'd like to say is that with any of these things, a lot of the times we'll feel fear. Yeah. But that's par for the course. Like, we're supposed to feel fear. Yeah. If we don't feel, feel fear, it is not big enough. Yeah. Um, but the difference between people who are successful and who are still on their way to success is they don't stay there. Yeah. They go, okay, this is this is scary. Okay, yeah. I'm not going to stay here. What's my first step? I like don't that. look no, at the mountain. <laughs> that's a great pearl of wisdom, though. If you don't feel fear, it's not not big enough. That's right. Yeah, I like that. Mm -hmm. So you're really embracing it and energetically shifting it in a different way. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, love that. Okay, well, thank you. This has been wonderful. I, I love what you're doing, and thank I you. can't wait to see what happens with the children's curriculum. So, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited. Thanks for having yes. me, Beth. <laughs> yes. All right, until next week, wishing you bliss so that you too can help in pollinating the planet with love. Hear who's up next when you like my page, Beth Bell Live, and join me each week as I invite a new guest into the mobile recording studio to help in pollinating the planet with love.